Hello lovelies, today we're looking at Temple of the Worm for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. It's an adventure. Adventures are hard to review without giving anything away. So, because the central conceit of this adventure is so integral to any review and to any playing of the adventure, um, spoilers, I guess. If you think your games master is going to run this, bugger off. Bugger off? Good. Okay, so the central conceit of this entire adventure is that of Flatland. If you don't know what Flatland is, it's a story in two dimensions and it's considered a classic of science fiction uh, literature. Um, it is well worth a look. There's all kinds of analyses and so on online, but it's basically speculating about what life would be like in two dimensions. And that is very much what occurs within this adventure. Uh, the introduction also references Kurt Vonnegut and Slaughterhouse Five. So this is going to be fucking with your sense of time and space dimensionality as you as you might call it so it's quite ambitious in that sense um, it's odd it's very high concept at least in its underlying ideas and so the success or failure of this adventure very much depends <laughs> upon your players ability to grapple with non-linear time and with dimensions at the same time. Either one of those would make a challenging adventure concept an idea. Um, both at the same time is much more difficult. So the idea around the adventure is that there are these two-dimensional creatures hidden away in a temple, as far as humanity is concerned, hiding out from a multi-dimensional predator that is hunting them down to the point of extinction. Um, you guys invade the temple and encounter these things and how it unfolds is then up to you. So even though it is very high concept, it is all contained within a mostly a conventional dungeon which helps hem things in and make them a little bit more controllable, um, I, I suppose. Um, it feels like a concept that could have been bigger, but by having it set within this this temple, these rooms, these chambers, the conventional-ish dungeon crawl, uh, it makes the more challenging concept slightly less challenging and more manageable. The idea of dimensionality, the spells and so on that are presented within the book that feature dimensionality, may be more useful elsewhere. See, that's always my problem with adventures, is that they're one and done, uh, really. Once you've um, paid your money and run through the adventure, you don't have a lot of use for it ever again. Uh, maybe you might run one at a convention or something. You know, this is a very self-contained adventure. So that's yeah, that's that's got its place, I suppose. But it means that whenever I review uh, an adventure book, one of my criteria, substance, is often not somewhere where an adventure performs well, because there's not a lot that you can reuse. This is slightly better uh, than normal in terms of what you can take and reuse elsewhere. Oh, how to score this style then? It's nicely presented. Um, full colour throughout, even though many of the illustrations and so on are just uh, purely black and white, but there's a good use of colour throughout. I like the neat and tidy black and white line line art, um, even against a, a coloured background. More could have been made of the two-dimensionality, I think. It might have been interesting, for example, to have had a three-dimensional object moving through a two-dimensional plane, almost like a, a flick book going through. You could do like um, 
slices through through a person <laughs> passing through two dimensions because like um an orb passing through two dimensions appears as a dot then circles that get bigger and circles that get smaller than a dot and then it disappears so it might have been nice to play with that kind of concept in the illustrations but um yeah challenging so in terms of style the content is challenging and interesting possibly too challenging and too interesting for a lot of tables the artwork is all um pretty good um it's a nice object you know print quality is always good with uh, with lamentations so i'd say um a high four for style because i think some groups are going to have a time <laughs> with this um if they can't grok the issues of, of time and space that are involved in it but hopefully if they're playing lamentations they will in terms of substance slightly better than average um, in that the dimensionality is something that you can take and use elsewhere uh, whenever you need strangeness and this opens up a world of higher and lower dimensional creatures and how they might interact with the world in other ways um, which can become almost Lovecraftian um, I, that, that, I would say that's that's where the strength lies so it's slightly better than normal in terms of reusability so i'm going to give it so it was a high four for style high three for substance so that would be seven out of ten but because they're both high i'm gonna bump it to an eight out of ten a four out of five if you think your group can handle the kind of concepts that are that are presented in here and will be able to wrap their brains around two-dimensionality and non-linear non time then this is a, a great addition and it's it's ambitious and its ambition should be rewarded i think so there you go zang splatpunk is a retroclone rpg so you can make your own splatpunk games whether that be Cyberpunk, Clockpunk, Steampunk, Biopunk, Narcopunk, whatever it might be, you'll find this system adaptable to all your needs. Available at post-mort.com, lulu.com, and DriveThruRPG.